Someone wrote, the way we bury the dead is indicative of the society that you live in. The word columbarium is derived from the Latin word columbum, which means dove. Doves would have little nests, which were called niches. So a building of niches is called a columbarium. The business started in 1884, but the founding fathers actually go back to 1875, where it was a group of professionals who felt that cremation was the most sanitary way to dispose of the deceased. And at the Geneva Conference, they promoted the idea of cremation. And then afterwards, they actually got funding, they got money, and they built this crematory. As we performed the cremations, we found that families wanted to have a little service. So they built the original chapel, which is in the main building, and a columbarium. People don't understand what they could do. And some people think cremation and that's it. No, it's not it, because you still have an opportunity to memorialize the cremated remains, whether in a burial plot or in a columbarium. Prior to placing the remains in a niche, we'll have a service over the ashes, and then we carry the urn and commit it to niche. So basically, there's no difference from burial and cremation in terms of memorialization, except that you're indoors, you're environmentally friendly because you're not using up all the land. Think about it. We're less than an acre of land. We have 16,000 niches here with over 40,000 cremated remains. We cover most financial needs and it's beautiful. It's really solemn. It's very tranquil. Comparing burial of a body to cremation or enrichment, burial of a body, there's a lot of things that are in that that are costly. You have the casket, you buy, traditionally you buy a better casket. You have the stone, you have the plot. That can run a couple of, you know, quite a bit of money, three, four, five thousand, ten thousand dollars. Whereas, either burial or placement of ashes into a niche, here, um, we can provide a family for seven hundred and ninety-five dollars, a memorial plus the opening engraving, so around $1,200, you can memorialize the remains. In comparative, you probably can do the same thing in a burial plot for remains, but here you're getting the uh, value of a historic building. You're indoors, you don't have to, you can visit any all year round. You know, that's why I work here, because it's allowed me to see a vision and then develop it, and, and not realizing the actual ramifications of it, and what I found when I started this 10 years ago, we do a memorial tree service. We found that uh, we put a huge 16-foot memorial tree up. And it has developed into something a little bit different where we can give people an opportunity to share their grief with others and to celebrate, because that's what it's about. Memorialization is a celebration of life, the life of the individual who's passed on. You can have a traditional wake. You could have what they call a direct cremation with no one in attendance. You can have a service here. We have the chapel instead of the formal traditional wake to minimize the cost and the time some people can't deal with a full-blown wake. But it's an option. When you have cremated remains, some people do take it home, but you should have a plan for the survivors because a lot of times, they get left or they get abandoned. And obviously, you care enough for the remains to have them home. Uh, you don't want to leave it to the heirs to take care of. You want to have a plan, whether it be going to be buried with you or placed in a niche here. By not completing that process of memorialization, you're leaving it open. And I believe that some people can't deal with it by, and this is my opinion, by finalizing those remains in a place, they're forced to acknowledge the person is truly gone. Cremation is definitely on the rise. Uh, it's approximately about 35% in New York State. 
A national is about 50% and we care and we're constantly improving. I have a special infant section just for infants and I have families that had stillborns. They are still a part of your life. And I'll never forget a lady who lost their child. She wrote so beautifully a thank you note. She said, you know, in life, you may meet a person just once, but that person has left such a mark on your life that you became a different person. You became a better person. And she writes to her daughter, because she only lived a few weeks. She says, Melissa, I have learned more in the few weeks that you were alive than I have done in my whole life. You taught me what the type of person I should be. And she thanked everyone for their support. And I think that's what death, death does when you do lose someone. And I have personal losses too. I've lost a child, I've lost the grandparents, I lost the father. It does change you. And you have to take that change and make it better, make the world a better place. To understand death is to understand life and to appreciate life.